Long-term Care Administrators Board meeting is convening at 9.06 a.m. on March 8th, 2024. This meeting is being held via MS Teams video conferencing and is being recorded. Um, the recording will be posted to the internet for public viewing. The Health Licensing Office asks that individuals attending through MS Teams keep your phone muted and cameras off during the entire meeting until you are given the opportunity to comment during the public and interested parties feedback period if indicated on the agenda. Please do not use the chat feature during the meetings. Should I turn my camera off? No, you don't have to. Okay. Don't want to be telling the rules and then like, you know, mess no, up the no, rules. No. All we, right. We, we do that because of the bandwidth. If everyone gotcha. had their camera up, it, the bandwidth would just disappear and people would get kicked out. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, well, if you ever want me to turn it off, let me know. Um, I will now call roll. Uh, Carol Hankins. Present. Hello. Uh, Samuel Weiss. Breaking here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Jennifer Broadbeck, I believe she cannot attend. I got logged in as a guest. I think that's okay. So Jennifer uh, is not here. Okay. Uh, Drosti Patel. Present. Wonderful. Jocelyn Cook. I go with not present currently. Uh, Emily Morgan. I am here. Wonderful. Uh, Corey Crimson. Present. Present. Wonderful. And then David Harris. Harris? Uh, oh, Lewis. I think it's Lewis. Yes. Oh, sorry. David Lewis. Yes, I'm here. Perfect. Uh, members, when you wish to speak, please state your last name for the record. Members are asked to not use the chat feature during meetings. Public members attending in person, or I guess electronically, uh attending in person wishing to speak must first sign in on the roster sheet available oh i see the next part for public members on ms teams please email carrie edwards at carrie with a c dot edwards at oha.organ.gov and provide your first and last name public and interested parties feedback may be heard during the public interested parties feedback period if indicated on the agenda everyone is asked to use appropriate language manners and protocols when conducting board business this meeting is called to order all right. Thank you, uh, Chair, members of the board. This is Bob Bothwell, currently the interim director here at the Health Licensing Office. And, um, uh, Chair, the first item on the agenda is approval of that agenda. Wonderful. We need a motion to approve the agenda, please. From someone so on the board. Moved. David. Moved. Lewis, David. So moved. Wonderful. Do we have a second? Hankins. Patel Carol. second. Perfect. Um, I will now call. What do we call it? What do I call for? Roll. Roll. Thank you. Uh, Carol Hankins. Yes. Uh, Samuel Weiss. Hankins. Uh, uh, yay or nay? Samuel Weiss, yay or nay for uh, approval of the agenda? Approval of the agenda. I think you're on mute, Samuel. I think you're on mute. Should I come back? Yes, thank you. Uh, Drosti Patel. Yay. Wonderful. Uh, Jocelyn is still in here. Uh, Emily Morgan. Yay. Thank you. Corey Crimson. Yes. And David Lewis. Lewis. Thank you. Aye. And Maggie Hildy. Just... Yay. And we haven't heard from Samuel yet. Oh, Samuel, are you able to hop off mute and yay or nay for approval of the agenda? Are we able to take him off mute? No. I don't know. Let me find I'm not on try. my end, but maybe you guys can on your end since you're the meeting organizer. Unfortunately, we're not able to unmute people. We can only mute people. Okay. Okay. 
If you like, um, Chair and Bob, I can go ahead and mark him as um, he, he he noted that he was there, but we didn't get a, a vote. Okay. Is that acceptable? Yeah, I mean, we we passed it with uh, enough of the board members. Okay. okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Next on the agenda is introductions. And I will go, we can go off the list, chair of, on the agenda and start with Corey. So Corey, uh, Corey if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, go sure, ahead. Corey Chrisman, I'm the CEO here at Pioneer Place Health District in Vail, Oregon. Excellent. Uh, Did you have additional? No, I just didn't know how much you wanted to. You could tell, yeah, we'd so. love to, I'd love to know a little bit about you. I talk a lot, so I'd love to hear someone else talk. <laughs> how long the business and uh, Oh, sure, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I got my administrator's license in uh, 2016. Uh, I worked for um, Regency Pacific and uh, um, Prestige Health, and then I was in Maui for a while. For a couple of years, I worked for Ohana Pacific over there. So now I'm here in Vail. Wonderful. Welcome. Are you, are you, um, and so this is for everyone else too, are you here as a licensed, licensed nursing home administrator or an RCF admin? A uh, licensed nursing home administrator. Wonderful, just helpful to know. Cool, well, welcome. Emily. Hi, yeah, I'm Emily Morgan. I'm a geriatrician. Uh, I work at OHSU. Um, I've been in practice for about 10 years now, and I am the lead for OHSU Internal Medicine's skilled and long-term care team. So I manage all of our providers who do work in, in skilled long-term care and assisted living. And I am currently and have been for about it's almost eight years. Um, the medical director at Mirabella Portland. Oh wow! Wonderful! Oh, wow. Wonderful! Oh, oh. <laughs> now me. you get to hear yourself twice. I can hear myself twice. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Yep. David. Okay, you're up. Karen, can you hear me? Excellent. Um, I've been in the business for over thirty years. I am licensed both as a skilled nursing facility administrator and an RCF administrator. Um, for the last 12 plus years, I have been the executive director at Capital Manor, a continuing care um, life plan community in Salem, Oregon. We, um, and, and so I I work in Salem um, daily and um, live in Eugene. So I um, wow. I travel the I five corridor um, quite regularly. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Um, and chair, um, do you want to introduce yourself, and we'll sure. just go around the room. Sure, sure. Well, hi everyone. I'm Maggie Hilty. Um, I'm currently board chair. I think this is my first full year as board chair here, but I have been on the long term care administrators board meeting since. It switched to the long-term care administrator's board meeting, not meeting, board, board, the board. What it was before, As, anyway, anyways, when we added the RCF licensing. So um, I think five or six years now um, on the board. Um, I am a licensed nursing administrator. I work for Avamir um, in a sports services role now, but um, I continue to work with all the facilities across Oregon. Um, yeah, happy to be here. Um, uh, I'm just going to quickly go down my list real fast, too. Uh, so, Carol, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Hi, Carol Hankins. Um, so, I've been, I was, uh, worked as a, a social worker in skilled nursing facilities for two years, and I was a director of an adult day services program for seven years. I worked in um, memory care for eight years, was a volunteer chaplain in memory care for nine years, and then up until COVID for nine years, I was a certified ombudsman. And 
you are here as a member of the you're in the public seat i can't remember correct wonderful public. Mm -hmm. um samuel how about you I wonder is that if this is Samuel in Weiss. Hi. I was given I was given the login to the meeting, but it's as a guest. So can you transfer me into a member? There we go. I uh I think that what Carrie had uh, described for us earlier that we weren't able to do that potentially, but that it shouldn't affect your ability to participate is my understanding. Correct. So it should be, so it should be okay. Yeah. Um, but Sam, we're just quickly, we, we're doing some introductions. We have three new board members. Um, and so we were just quickly going through and introducing everyone. And so if you want to quickly just introduce yourself to the group, that would be great. Maybe we'll go on to Drasti. Thank you. Hi. Hi there, I'm Drosti Patel. It's my first year on the board. I've worked in healthcare for past 10 years. Uh, four of them have been in senior living. Uh, prior to that, I worked in hospital skilled nursing. For the past couple of years, I've, I've been working as an executive director for Springs Living. And I'm an RCF admin. Wonderful, thank you. Um, did Jocelyn end up joining us? Doesn't look like it on my end. So, Not that um, I'm so I think that's it. OK, um, chair members of the board. My name is Bob Bothwell again. Um, I'm the interim director. I've been with health licensing for about 12 years and I've been in state government 32 years. Um, and I will pass it on to Ann. Your special, uh, good your... morning, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Um, my name is Ann Thompson. <laughs> And I'm a pol one of two policy analysts here at the Health Licensing Office. I'm so sorry, Bob, I interrupted you. Um, it, it's kind of my brand interrupting. Uh, but uh, I've been here for about 10 years. I've been in state government for about 15. Uh, prior to this, I was in the news media. And uh, this is one of, I think, eight boards that I oversee. And I have five programs. And I'm here if you ever have questions about board meetings, concerns, things you're not sure what to do, you can reach out to myself or anyone at the office and they will funnel you to me and I will take care of you. So I believe the next person up would be Tina. Good morning, everybody. Um, happy Friday. My name is Tina Russell and I've been with this office for 27 years. Um, in just a couple of weeks, and I'm the licensing manager. Welcome. And I think the last one, if he is here, oh, Trampas is preoccupied this morning. Is that correct? What about Carrie? Can oh, Carrie there he is. Trampas is here. Oh, no, I'm here. Uh, I'm Trampashek. I'm the interim regulatory manager uh, for the health licensing office. I've been with the office for about just over 15 years now, most of that time spent in regulatory, a little bit over in policy, a couple of years um, working over there on Ann's side of the the, uh, the office, uh, pre ann But um, so, yeah, um, I'm here to help out with any regulatory stuff. Uh, we handle all the investigations, all the complaints over here and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, uh, I'll be talking to you later about investigations and about the um, regulatory report um, a little bit later in the uh, in the meeting. So welcome. Thank you. OK, and Carrie, please. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Edwards, and I am currently the board specialist. Um, I currently hold a couple different roles in the office, so I'm also an education specialist. Um, and then I also help out uh, Tina with upfront staff. So, um, and then you guys have seen emails from me back and forth in regards to board meetings and stuff like that. So I'm still in a couple different roles here, but nice to see everyone. Thanks, everybody. Um, Chair, do we want to see if Sam's available to introduce himself? Sure, Sam, Thank you. do you want to just try to hop yourself off mute and just give us a quick introduction? And then if you're not unable, we'll just head forward. Doesn't seem like he's able to, but um, so just for us, okay. the board, Sam is Sam is um, one of our board members. Um, I believe he worked as an ombudsman prior to. Uh, That's correct. The board. Wonderful. Um, and yeah, he's been on the board uh, probably for about a year now. Yes. And he is vice chair. So if he, I am not here, he is your guy. All right. OK, so. Um, Moving on, if you're okay with it, Chair and members of the board, we will start with the thumbs up on the director's report. Okay, well, we just uh, went through um, introductions and the current board membership. Um, I'll just do it real quick uh, without doing the expiration times and dates because y'all have that in front of you, but uh, Maggie Hilty is in their first term and is chair. Jocelyn Cook is in first term. Jennifer Broadbeck, first term. David Lewis, first term. Drosti Patel, first term. Corey Crimson, first term. Dr. Emily Morgan, first term. And uh, Sam Weiss is first term and vice chair. And Carolyn Hankins is first term as well. And moving on to licensing and fiscal statistical reports. So this is going to be new and probably boring for the new board members, um, but I will try to, um, with my dry sense of humor and monotone voice, uh, make it a little more interesting. So um, on, if you're following along on slide 12, we have the uh, nursing home administrator number of license licenses issued. So we've got uh, fiscal years 22, 23 and 24. Um, we're currently in fiscal year 24 um, in quarter three. And the reason we're in quarter three and only three months in is with state government. Everything's different, um, including fiscal years, which begin July 1 of one year and in, end in June on June 30 of the following year. So currently we've issued in fiscal year 2024, 26 nursing home administrator licenses, residential care facility administrator licenses, we've issued 130. Nursing home administrator licenses renewed on slide 14. Um, the majority, I'm always happy to see this, is by paper, uh, excuse me, online, <laughs> and uh, slowly dropping off on the paper. You can see in quarter three, um, we've only had six so far uh, for a total of 193 nursing home administrator licenses being renewed. Uh, residential care facility administrator as well. A lot of it is online. Thank you very much. And um, so far, in uh, fiscal year 2024, quarter three, one, two, and three, we've issued 479 licenses. Excuse me. And by licenses by age and gender, um, nursing home administrator, um, it is um, pretty well spread out through the age and um, Ident gender, gender identifications. And we've got some 74 to 81 with their license. That's good. 
residential care administrators. Um, looks like it's predominantly those identify as female and um, that group as well spread out pretty, pretty well. And uh, we have some administrators that whose ages are 82 to 89. We have one that still carries a license. Licensing trends, um, you see these are um, 28.7, and that's not 28.7 administrators, that's an average. That uh, caught me off guard when I first saw it too. I was questioning how do we get 0.7 administrators? But um, we have our ebbs and flows with uh, administrators in training. And uh, since we're still early in mid fiscal year 2024, I would suspect that may continue, that may move. Sam, you have a question? No, Sam just called in. Oh, okay. So for the record at 927, Sam is back on the meeting. I don't know quite when he left. Okay, so for AITs, we've got an average of 28.7 currently in quarter three. Nursing home administrators, um, it's a good upward trajectory, um, 361.7. For fiscal year 2024, total of 356 on the average. Residential care administrators, 929. Okay, financials on slide 21. So the board be had a beginning balance in 2024, which again ended, started July 1 of 2023 of $807,648. Um, brought in 150,556 and have spent expenses of 77,492 and net operations um, of 73,064. Excuse me, dyslexia is kicking in. Um, with an Indian cash balance of $880,712. Um, any questions for me with regards to the slides that we've looked at thus far? All right, moving on. Um, the next slide on 22 um, are the testing results. And for 2022, there was a grand total of 160. <laughs> 23, 268, and so far this year, um, 2024, 131. And these are the, NA, the National Core and NHA exams. And that includes uh, the, the exams that are taken at HLO. Any questions on that slide? Um, Bob, just for the record, this is Ann. I know it is a little confusing. Um, we've had some changes. We had to add uh, the licensed uh, residential care facility administrator exam. And right as COVID was hitting, we had an abbreviated exam. Um, we were trying to keep uh, applicants from getting stuck in the process during COVID. And so we put it on Workday, an abbreviated version of the exam. And then we flushed it out. And it was still available in Workday because statutorily you're required to make your exam widely available and convenient. And so we left it on Workday, but we flushed it out and it became um, a much more um, extensive exam. So that's why we have all of these columns and we have them broken down by quarter. I, I know it's a bit busy visually, uh, but does anybody have any more questions on that? Thank you, Bob. Uh, thanks, Anne. Thanks for the clarification. 
All right. Um, on slide 23, we go to the regulatory report 23 and 24. So if Trampus can come online, please. Sure. So hi, everybody. It's Trampus Chuck again uh, to talk about the regulatory report and just kind of regulatory and investigations in general. I know we have some new board members, um, so I kind of like to make sure that uh, kind of the process and uh, have, have given a little bit of an overview on the process and, and what this report means. Um, so, you know, at the Health Licensing Office, we regulate the nursing home administrators of long-term care. Uh, you know, residential care assisted living administrator only. We kind of have a situation where we dual license because the the facilities, are, of course, are licensed by uh, another entity, and we're and we're we license just the administrators and regulate just the administrators. So, um, you know, there's a lot of surveys and and on the ground investigations and inspections that take place in the facilities, and and so our investigations oftentimes involve those other agencies or and they often come from those other agencies so we get a lot of survey results where there might be a problem or something like that they came up and it's referred over to us and then we we have to look at it and decide whether there's something that um, connects to the administrator themselves or if it was just a, a situation that isn't particularly connected to the directly at least to the to the administrator so we get a lot of we get a fair amount of complaints. We have a, a dedicated investigator for this board, and um, she um, she works she works pretty hard um, to keep these uh, complaints in check. Um, I, I will note one thing on the regulatory um, report. The regulatory report came out uh, was I think finalized about a week ago, and actually since then a couple of uh, things have come up there. I think we're actually down to a grand total. Um, Instead of 63, I think it's more like uh, 57 now. So um, the the report is just slightly outdated. There's been a few closures since then. Um, so so yeah. So that's that's that. Typically um, uh, on a given meeting, we might be going into executive session if we had things or cases to talk about specifically. Um, at this meeting, we don't we don't have any of those. Um, uh, but um, uh, uh, there have been, like I said, we've closed about as many as we brought in over the last couple of months. Um, so you can see on this report, there's three biennium. There's the 2021 biennium. That one shows that we got 67 cases come in and we closed 58 of them and nine are still open. Like I said, that number isn't quite accurate. I think it's more like four or five that are still open um, for that biennium. And then uh, we got the 2023 biennium, which is uh, we had 71 come in. Uh, it's a newer biennium, so you would expect to see more open. And uh, those uh, we have 41 of the 71 still open. And then um, also we have the newest biennium. This biennium, I think, just goes back through last uh, July 1st, I think, is when it goes back to of 2020. Three, so um, we've got 17 in, and, and 13 of those are still open. Uh, over to the right, you can see kind of the the um, breakdown of what the types of complaints are: licensing concerns, um, services provided, and unassigned. Licensing concern would be kind of what it sounds like: somebody is not licensed, and you can you can kind of see. Um, I would I would think that you could kind of pull those out. We when um, a lot of those licensing concerns probably have to do with residential care because we've had you know a handful of complaints you know especially with the new mandatory licensure um, and then there's some there's some actually exemptions for um, the facilities to be able to have somebody working temporarily. So sometimes we get complaints and we have to vet through those and see, is this somebody who has an exception or is this, you know, um, somebody who's just working without a license. So we've gotten a few more of those recently and you can see 2023 um, is where we kind of bulked with those. And then uh, service provided, those in general are going to be like coming over from a survey or sometimes from a client or a client or a uh, resident's family member. But um, those are going to be 
you know, that's just kind of our starting point. They're going to be, you know, having to do with, you know, something that happened in the facility allegedly. And then unassigned, that just means that it didn't get clicked. So it's probably an error that that one says unassigned. Or it's just it was new and it got caught up in the thing before it was assigned. Complaints by type or complainants by type. We got anonymous. We don't get really any, any much anonymous complaints for this group. Um, a few from the client, but mostly from other. That's outside agencies. Those are, uh, again, that's probably from the actual licensure programs that license the facilities, most of those. Or it could be from ombudsmans or, or things like that um, that come in, third party or self-referred or things like that. So, um, yeah, so that's the regulatory report. I want to note that we had um, – we also are in the middle of a little bit of a transition period, probably one of the reasons we don't have a lot of cases uh, that are coming to the board. The cases that come to the board are typically the more complex cases where there might be a, a violation that occurred or we're not sure if there was a violation occurred. Um, we had over the last year, uh, we had a, been working with a subject matter expert. Um, uh, which is which was somebody who was licensed in the industry, actually dual licensed in both both types of licenses, and um, we had that person, and and we were actually able to get through quite a few of the more complex cases with that person. It was uh, it was a really big help. Um, but uh, just recently, when uh, that contract didn't get renewed, and so we are looking for a new SME, and we're actually in the process of recruiting. And I we put it out about a, a couple of weeks ago, and we've really gotten a, a fantastic. Um, um, uh, kind of in pour of, of uh, a lot of uh, people interested. So we're vetting through that right now, and I'm hoping that we'll have a couple of SMEs uh, on board over the next couple of months. It does take a little bit of time to actually go through the process. Even once you select somebody, there is a lot of um, a, a lot of uh, processes that you have to go through to get somebody on contract. So it does take a little bit of time, but I suspect we'll have somebody online uh, over the next couple of months and um, we'll be able to um, start moving through some of those more complicated situations. So uh, I know that was a lot. Does anybody have any questions about regulatory or the report or investigations in general? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I don't see anybody. Thanks, Travis. <clears throat> Chair, are you still with us? I'm still here. Okay. Um, uh, next item on the agenda, if nobody has any questions for Travis or myself, would be public industry parties feedback. All right. Uh, at this time, the Long Term Care Administrators Board will hear public interested parties feedback. Members of the public, this meeting is being held via MS Teams video conference and is being recorded. The recording will be posted to the internet for public viewing. Please be sure to mute your microphone and unmute only when you have been recognized. Once unrecognized, oh no, no, sorry, once recognized, my bad. Uh, please state your name and affiliation to the board for the record. Is there anyone? Oh, Sam, are you raising your hand? I'm raising my hand because I'm still registered as a guest. Yeah, that's completely fine. It doesn't it doesn't affect anything for us, so we're we're good there. OK, well, I wasn't able to. Uh, indicate that I was present earlier. We okay. did hear when you were present, so we got that. We were unable to verify um, your A or nay for approval of the agenda, but we did note that you were there during it. OK, thank you. Yeah. OK, I didn't see any other hands, Chair, um, for public. Um, so the next item on the agenda is other board business. Um, I wanted to bring up the 
slide. I'm scrolling back. Give me a second on slide 22, which was the testing results. Um, if uh, any of the board members that have seen this and were um, confused by it, if they have suggestions, uh, you can email Ann or um, speak to it now. And uh, we'll try to make this a little more uh, readable. Like, uh, for example, we've got fiscal year 22 and uh, 23 on there and 24. Do we need 22 on there? Um, is that too much or and you can uh, you can digest it and think about it and respond anytime so I think that the historical information from fiscal year 2022 is helpful at least still currently to see the growth tra trajectory of those that are testing getting licensed passing etc based off of what exam okay. um, I would say maybe after this close of this biennium what's this next year right because it's not this July. It's, uh -huh. Is it this July? The biennium or the fiscal year? The fiscal year. Sorry, the, the fiscal year is this year, right? But then don't, don't we have another number that's by biennium instead? That's where I get a little confused sometimes. Yeah, the biennium oh, well, is two the, years. That's the regulatory part. So I think we're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. So, sorry, so sometimes I like to try year... and match them up, but they, they, those two don't match. So that's, and that's purposeful. That's fine. <laughs> Okay. Who knows? You, so, you guys okay, in, your, so, in your silly, your silly little calendars. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was brought into it. I, I oh. no, no decision making on this at all. All right, I will uh, for the calendars that is. Okay, thanks. So yeah, okay. So then uh, in uh, July of twenty-two, or excuse me, July of twenty, as I'm confused, of July of this year. We will take off 2022. Yeah, maybe, or or maybe we leave it through because I think our next meeting is what going to be in the fall, and then we can kind of see, and then maybe from there. I think having okay. at least more than one year is helpful to just note. But okay, so we'll leave. Ann, are you getting that? We'll leave 22 on. <laughs> so in <laughs> July of, of 24. No, okay. So we're going to leave. Keep the, I just want to make sure I capture it right. Keep the testing report as it is, and at the end of the year, drop the oldest one off. Yeah, maybe. That, that would be, that would at least have two full years of data every time. Okay, would so you my want two full, year, two full years every time. That's easy to understand. Okay, there we go. Unless anyone feels different, I'm not in charge here. I just take the votes. <laughs> Yes, oh, Carol. Carol. Okay, hey, uh, Carol. I concur. Thank so you. Two full years every time. Cool. Got it. Perfect. All right. I don't see anybody else's hand up there, and uh, the next item on your on the agenda or your script actually is adjournment. Oh, that was all um, of other board business. Well. Uh, yeah, if before we um, gavel out, um, if we could, just to make sure, is there anything else um, anybody wants to see at our fall meeting, which is scheduled for Friday the 13th in September? Um, we didn't have any legislative report, uh, really, because we didn't have any bills that were pertinent to this board. But in the fall, we'll know if there's anything that affects the office overall. Uh, if we do have cases that close out, if we get our subject matter expert on board and we have cases, would the board be amenable to a sort of mid, you know, because these are full meetings with all the licensing statistics. If we have some cases put together, would you all be amenable to a special meeting where we would just adjust, uh, address executive session issues? Would everybody be okay with I, that? I would say yes. I think that would be agreeable. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. So if we can put that together, we will. Um, if we have to wait until the fall, uh, we would plan for adjust your schedules. It would be a it would be a much longer meeting because we would have all the financials, the testing data, as well as cases, and we don't never know how long those are going to take. So yeah. just just to be aware. Thank you, Bob and Maggie. Um, is there anything else? Nothing for uh, me. I, I just have a quick question. At our September yes. meeting, will we 
decide meeting dates for the following year? Yes, ma'am. We have okay. um, some standard issue things for the fall okay. where we would discuss chair and vice chair, and we would be selecting our 2025 board. We would bring proposed dates so okay. in your calendars, and that's that's just sort of a fall piece of the furniture. We will take care of it then. Wonderful. All righty. Well, if there's nothing else, I will you may adjourn. move to adjournment. All right. There the long term. Was that something? No? All right. The long term care administrator's board meeting is adjourned at 946 a.m.